The Chicken Conspiracy Robbing Americans of the Toyota Hilux by the Fat Files. I do love that scope. I want to know what scope Just that is. Just once in my life, I would like to go to the internet with a question and have my question answered without falling into an enormous rabbit hole of government conspiracies and nonsense. <laughs> so sometimes these are one and the same. Uh, the silliness that was what the CIA in Operation Midnight Climax, was that the one? The silliness just knows no bounds okay, long story short toyota's got this new truck coming out it's just a flatbed plain jane work truck nothing uh -huh. fancy about it and it was okay. supposed to be like 10 or eleven thousand dollars brand new so naturally right. i wanted one so yeah. naturally i go to the internet with a simple question am i going to be able to buy this new toyota truck in america to which i am met with the answer probably not most likely for the same reason you can't buy a toyota hilux which is the other thing that's been what? pissing me off for 10 years inside what? of america and naturally in the back of my head i just kind of assumed like oh toyota just doesn't want to sell that truck in america for some reason maybe the money's not right it costs too much to import whatever and yeah it does cost too much to import but it's yeah. because of chickens and lyndon b johnson that's why what's that what? <laughs> oh that's how you know it's a good one today that's how you know it's a good video <gasps> nick's so mad he forgot to send me a segue for the ad <laughs> that means we gotta do it right yeah <laughs> crack bang out I, I don't know what that was um, i love this man play the ad me. I love that one. This video is sponsored by Aura, where you can get everything you need to be safe and productive online in one convenient location. When you sign up for Aura, you're going to get a password manager that's going to help you have a strong and unique password for every online account that you have. In addition to that, you're also going to get antivirus software as well as a VPN. But Aura doesn't just keep your computer safe, they also keep your identity and your money safe as well. Aura will go to all the big data brokers on the internet, find out which ones are selling your personal information, and then submit opt-out requests to have that information taken down. They also offer credit monitoring and home title monitoring monitoring and in the unfortunate situation that somehow that isn't enough and your identity still gets stolen they offer up to a million dollars in insurance and a team that is available 24 7 to help you resolve the issue so go ahead and use my link down below you're gonna get a 14 day free trial with aura let's get back to the video and i can hear the comment section on like nine out of ten actually i actually liked the transition into the editor doing the cut hey Send me, send me the thing. Right, I actually kind of like that. It added to it. In other situations, that could detract from that. In this case, I'm actually a huge fan of that. Like, it well, it was different than his usual, you know, quick, snappy. Hey, today's sponsor is like how we saw that. I don't know the lead up into it. I was actually a huge fan of because it was personable enough. It was just to the point. It was hilarious. We got to see the the quack bang ducky. I like that actually. There are a lot of ad reads on YouTube that I've seen that are just like, and today's sponsor, we have it's th this was a lot, a lot better than those. I absolutely love this. That was on point. Bravo, fat electrician and uh, editor. L love you both. Already. Buh, if you want a Hilux, just get a Tacoma. They're basically the same thing. Buh. Buh. No, they are not for multiple <laughs> reasons. For one, I've driven a Tacoma, and it is literally the slowest moving vehicle I have ever driven in my entire life. That thing accelerates from zero to 60 in like three to five business days, okay? <laughs> Fucking Fred Flintstone would beat that thing in a drag race. <laughs> Secondly, I don't vividly remember being 14 years old watching Top Gear with my dad and seeing those guys drop a fucking Tacoma into the ocean for eight hours, fishing it out, and then getting it started in like 15 minutes. And yeah. then because that wasn't enough to kill it, they decided they were going to hit it with a wrecking ball, drive it through a building, light it on fire, and then stick it on top of a skyscraper before blowing the entire building up with it. And then the motherfucker still started, okay? Tacomas are not on the same level as Hiluxes. I don't care what you say. You will never convince me otherwise. It is the equivalent of my mom trying to convince me that store brand toaster pastries are Pop-Tarts. No, they're not. Pop-Tarts oh. are Pop-Tarts and Pop-Tarts are fucking awesome and you want to know why i can't get my metaphorical pop tart why i can't own and drive my own toyota hilux it's because america was too good at selling chickens in the 1950s and 60s yeah that's why okay so here's the he, you know he's delivering on this that's the thing like you have to have your youtube hook right about oh yeah no this is due to chickens this is due to lyndon b johnson I love that this like reality truly is stranger than fiction sometimes. Like we look at fantasy, we look at fiction, like, oh, it would never happen, or oh, that's so outlandish. That that could never. And then just reality. 
that, that's that that's it <laughs> reality oops there goes gravity just i'm that uh, wow well, generally speaking throughout the majority of human history chickens have always been like super expensive and seen as only something that rich people got to eat yeah. until very recently which Think about it for a second. It starts to make a little bit more sense. You have sense. like cows and goats and llamas and whatever other fucking farm animals you have. And they just. Well, and that's that's the thing that he's absolutely on point with that. Like, I mean, think about from a historical period standpoint, right? Where, you know, you get into uh, subs uh was it uh, sustenance farming, you get into agriculture, right? In terms of how civilizations evolve in farm animals, they kind of produce what you need. They produce things like milk and, you know, milk goes in cheese uh, many other recipes, many other dishes. Uh, then you have, you know, your chickens. Chickens lay your eggs and stuff. Chickens also make smaller chickens, which become big chickens, and you can get them for for poultry or or more eggs, right? Uh, they can also wake people up in the early morning. I know there's probably some people out in the countryside that have to deal with roosters on a daily basis, you know. So like that makes a lot of sense. It's kind of like how historically teachers have been some of the teachers and scholars really have been some of the most like prized positions some of the most absolutely prided individuals because education was really in certain periods of time was only reserved for nobility you know for that upper class and to be able to have that information to teach the nobility wasn't itself it was a high prestige position which is a far cry from modern teachers where they don't get near enough support that they need definitely support your teachers especially if they're good teachers support the teachers in your life but uh, yeah, no, like I, I, this definitely tracks from a period standpoint, historical standpoint. If you control the food source, you kind of have a lot of power. It's basically wander around and they eat the grass. Okay, yeah. that's not very expensive. Then you no. have pigs. You can literally just feed them garbage and they'll turn it into bacon somehow through yeah. evolutionary magic. It's Chickens, great. on the other hand, you have to like feed them grain and like actually give them real food that a human could technically eat. So historically speaking, they've always been one of the more expensive farm animals. So mm -hmm. only rich people got to eat them. Then in yeah, the 1950s after World War II, thanks to refrigeration and a couple of other innovations, America got super, super good at raising chickens. They got so good, in fact, that we could raise chickens slaughter them in America, ship them across the fucking ocean while refrigerating them, <laughs> and sell them in Europe, and it was still cheaper than people could grow and raise chickens in Europe. So Europe That's was wild. eating a bunch of American chicken. So they had too much cock? I guess that's one way to put it. Why? Got him. Just never thought I'd hear that come out of my mouth. Ooh! Wasted. Roasted. I love Anyways, these two. Anyways, this goes on. These two, like the 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 chronicles of their escapades, it gives me life. It gives me sustenance. Like I don't know if Fat Electrician watches these. Uh, if you watch these, I'm sorry. <laughs> I feel like I do. I I add context and commentary to your videos, and I feel like I make them worse. But I do appreciate you. Um, God, I love I love love how you two just have this back and forth. Th this is just super organic. I always love seeing these bits. Well, I do. I totally forgot what I was going to say. I had a totally relevant segue. Oh, yeah. I was going to say about how spotted dick is actually a dish. And before the YouTube manual reviewer gets upset at me, yes, it is a man. It is a, a dish over in Britain land over there yonder. It, it's called spotted dick. Look it up for a number of years Probably in European countries, on. primarily Germany was spearheading this entire thing. They get together and they're like, hey, let's put a 25% tariff on American chicken coming into the European market. That way, European chicken is more competitive. And if that right. wasn't enough, they started a major propaganda campaign, basically saying that America fills their chickens full of antibiotics and growth hormones, so it's really unhealthy for people to eat, which... I mean, honestly, that's, that's that's probably a fair assessment. But regardless, <laughs> America's now pissed off. So this is 1962 when this European tariff on American chicken passes. And for the next 18 months, it is the pinnacle of American politics, trying to get Europe to buy more American chickens. And it becomes known as the Chicken War, right in the middle of the Cold War. I'm not even... This is actually super interesting because what was it in the 90s? We had the UK, weren't they uh, the buy more beef thing, which led into the the whole was it mad cow at the time i i have to remember yeah because it was prion so it had to have been mad cow in some capacity yeah it, it had to have been beef right yeah eat more beef that kind of thing right over in uh europe man that is wild considering that this is like 20 to 30 years next to each other so we have the war on chicken followed by the whole eat more beef campaign then i guess like what is it oh god what was her face the, the, the milk lady that everybody, if you know who she is, has an opinion on that lady. I always forget her name. Margaret Thatcher, that's the one. Oh, I almost said Greta Thunberg for some reason. Nah, nah. If, if you don't know who Margaret Thatcher is, 
She's one of those people that if you know who she is, everyone will have an opinion on her. <laughs> Exaggerating. There were literally American politicians that cared more about getting Europeans to eat more chicken than they did about the pending nuclear war with the Soviet Union. The Chancellor Worth. of Germany, Konrad Adnar, said that he had more conversations with JFK about Germans eating American chicken than he did about the pending nuclear war. There was a <laughs> senator from Arkansas that was sitting in a NATO meeting when he stood up, interrupted the entire NATO meeting, and declared that America was going to withdraw from NATO and Europe could defend itself if they didn't live the sanctions on American chicken. <laughs> Obviously, that didn't actually happen. Despite that, the tariff ended up staying up. And after 18 months of trying to diplomatically solve this issue, then President Lyndon B. Johnson is like, fuck it, I'm just going to put a tariff on you guys too. And he put a 25% tariff on potato starch, dextrin, brandy, and light cargo Not vehicles. the brandy. Now, obviously, chicken is a food uh, product, which they are tariffing. So America is going to tariff dextrin, potato starch, and brandy, which are also food products. That part makes sense. But why on earth? There was, this is actually a really funny uh, part in regards to tariffs. There was a uh, WASI PTCG radio, excellent Pokemon TCG content creator if you haven't seen them. But uh, they, they they were talking about once about, you know, why Pokemon packs were becoming more expensive or something like that. And he was discussing tariffs, right? And he's he, he, paraphrasing a little bit, you know, he says, what is a tariff? Well, country, this country says that if they want this, another country says they want this, countries go tit for tat, now we're all paying more for Pokemon, and it is the most just based, accurate explanation of tariffs I have ever heard in my life, and I just, this made me think of that. It's, yeah, tariffs are just countries just going tit for tat with each other, and suddenly we're all just paying for more, we're just paying more. <laughs> Earth is America going to start taxing light cargo vehicles? Well, you see, that's where the yeah. good old-fashioned political corruption comes in, because it's 1964, it's an election year, and the UAE is about to go on strike, the UW. United Automotive Workers Union, and them going on strike during an election year is going to be disastrous for Lyndon B. Johnson's chances of getting reelected. So LBJ and the president of the UAE come to a little quid pro quo agreement. In exchange for the UAE not going on strike during LBJ's election, LBJ is going to abuse his political power to make sure that somehow, some way so many Volkswagen Type 2s, which are incredibly popular in America right now, quit getting imported, aka uh -huh. the Love Bus. You know, you've seen those. This is where they went. They went away <laughs> because man. of this. So this is why light <laughs> cargo vehicles gets added to the chicken tax, adding a 25% tariff to basically make it so that Germany can't import the Type 2. Now, light cargo vehicle at this point in time is defined as two seats or less and designed to transport cargo. So then right. because of that, all the foreign Truck. auto car makers like Toyota and Honda and all the other ones that make small trucks, not wanting to pay a 25% tax to import their trucks start importing the truck itself like the chassis and the cab and the motor all completely built in their country and then they ship over the bed separately and then yeah. they have a warehouse where they like throw a couple of bolts on and attach the bed so that way it's assembled in america and they're only going to get taxed four percent instead of 25 percent right. because the u.s government is this fucking stupid so then in the I mean, that, yeah. Well, so I wonder, actually, there was a couple, there's, there's a trend on TikTok, you know, where it's like Reddit posts of what has quietly went away without anybody really noticing it. And this is relevant to this because one of the things that was it gets mentioned a lot in those is smaller trucks. Usually everything's like a, what, a V8 now, V8, you know, uh, F250, 250, 350, et cetera, that, you know, very heavy duty trucks at this point, very heavy trucks. What happened to just the around town, you know, little Toyotas and stuff. So hearing this, is that perhaps the reason that even today we really don't have a lot of these? I'd be very curious to know if that's the answer or not. Because that would solve that conundrum. And it's, it, it's less of some just overarching, well, I can't even say it's less of an overarching, just weird political move, because clearly this is motivated by politics and money, like this entire decision. If you got the Model 2 out, right, on that, yeah. Well, and then assembled in America, you know, made in America. I mean, it, it makes sense to import the pieces, and thus you can assemble it. But you have to be careful, because depending on what it is, some things don't get around that. Like, for example, as far as I'm aware... If I wanted uh, not the the type, if I wanted an actual Dragonov, I cannot import that. What I can't, I don't even think I can import the parts. If I were to import the parts, maybe, but I think if I assemble it, that starts running into issues. So not everything can be immune to this as well, because once again, 
you're dealing with lawmakers and money. Why would it ever be easy? <laughs> 1980s, the U.S. government closes that loophole to which all the other auto car makers are like, fine, we'll just exploit another loophole. We'll just start adding more seats so that way there's more than two seats so it's not a cargo vehicle, yeah. it's just a normal vehicle. Yeah. And this is why every small to mid-sized truck, 1980s through like the early 2000s, had those tiny little seats in the oh. back that no human could ever actually fit on. It's that because makes they sense. were never actually designed those. for people to sit on. They were just there so that they could legally say, oh, it's designed to sit more than two people. Therefore, I get taxed at 4% instead of 25%. Again, because the government is dumb. Which, fun fact, <laughs> this is also why the Subaru Brat had those stupid plastic seats in the back. And then Wild. they came out with the cafe standards, which is basically like trying to, you know, save the environment with emissions and stuff. And the rule was the vehicle has to be like proportional compared to how much emission that it emits, I guess. Right. So like if a truck is really big, it can emit a bunch of CO2 into right. the atmosphere. But if a truck is really small, all, it's not allowed to emit a bunch of CO2 into the atmosphere. And this is actually why all the trucks in America are fucking ginormous lately in like the last 20 years okay i know that's like a super popular thing to bitch about like you hear a bunch of hippies and college kids bitching about how american trucks are too big and it's more dangerous and they're taking up space on the road and they're beating up the infrastructure yeah it's because of stupid fucking emissions policies because it's easier for automakers to just make the truck physically fucking larger than it yeah. is to make the emissions somehow magically lower so that's why that's happening so not i love this i love this video this video is actually answering a lot of questions that i didn't know i had or at least like consciously know that i had that makes a lot of sense though well emissions policies at least here in idaho have been very weird as well so for example having a friend that lives in the treasure valley area if you know where that is you know where that is it's kind of like boise area right but there's also uh kind of across on the eastern side of the state there's magic valley that's about twin falls area right I think, God, my geography is throwing me off, local state geography. Uh, but the reason I bring this up and the reason I kind of put things in perspective of how kind of close they are is there is, have been people in Idaho that uh, got around emissions testing because they would just register their vehicle, say, over in a county over in Magic Valley. And, you know, but they live in the Boise area. They live in the Treasure Valley. And because they registered it over there where they don't have emissions testing, they could drive here and not have to worry about emissions testing where you have people that live there. And, you know, they're just like, well, I don't want to go all the way over there. But then they they're they're the ones that are forced to do emissions testing, to which I think in 20 midway through 2023, I think they just abolished emissions testing altogether. Don't quote me on that. If you live in Idaho, definitely do your research. But like, yeah, it's it's never easy. And there's it's just these policies end up bringing about just a lot of confusion and a lot of loopholes like this. I mean, then, I mean, then this leads into the, uh, the next part of that, which is like, okay, well, if we're having to do emissions and stuff, if, you know, we have to crush our cans, you know, recycle cardboard and stuff, you know, what are, <laughs> what is big money doing about it? Right. I don't know about you, but these, you know, I hear everything I've heard about these paper straws kind of sucks. So why don't we get, a, you know, get rid of these, uh, <laughs> the entire plastic cup go maybe like a you know, disposable like you know cardboard cup that kind of thing and uh you know have them do it but once again it's money and it's politics it's why i don't really delve into politics because it just gets messy and i don't want to do <laughs> i don't i don't want that mess i really don't um then then the third one is like trucks being large i don't know i don't know if i subscribe to them necessarily causing like public infrastructure damage and stuff like that i'm also not the authority in that Put it this way, I'm lucky that I know how to how to like check my dipstick, <laughs> or uh, or that you can take the cap off uh, when you're when it's not hot. Take the cap off your radiator, and you can fill it with water in an absolute pinch. Which I've had cars that have been in an absolute pinch, and you kind of needed to do that. That being said, contents under pressure. Do your research, right? But like, oh god. I don't know. I, I don't know about the whole big truck. It's it annoying sometimes, especially if they have to take up double spaces and stuff because it's so large. But if this is the root cause of this and the symptom is you get larger trucks and a lot of larger trucks, I mean, isn't that necessarily a manufacturer issue? And I'm not you know, faulting any of the workers on the ground floor. That That's a, once again, big business decision and a big business decision that is affected by modern policy. It's interesting how this is just kind of the root of this whole thing, isn't it? Not only is the cafe standards not helping with emissions and CO2, it's actually incentivizing automakers to make trucks unnecessarily ridiculously yeah. large just so they can comply with this law. And I know Wild. what you're thinking. Well, at least the chicken tax is helping American automakers compete in the market so that they can make more money and stay but in business. Is and that's, that's just not the case anymore either because even they're getting fucked over by this law because when Ford tries to import transit vehicles, 
vehicles, which they have made over in Turkey, they have to intentionally put extra seats and windows and shit inside of it, import it, and then send them to a factory and have all the seats and windows taken out and convert it back into a fucking cargo vehicle. This is why all the transit vans and shit that are super popular are really fucking expensive. And this is why my work that I work at to be an electrician can't ever find a goddamn transit van to use as a work truck because A, they're getting way more expensive because we're having to import them with extra seats so they're not cargo vehicles because somehow that saves money. And right. then my boss is desperately trying to compete with all the fucking millennials that want to go live in a van and start an Instagram so they can have hashtag van life in every fucking picture they post. This policy is literally helping nobody. Nobody on the planet yeah. is benefiting right now except for maybe the government so that they can get more tax money over fucking nothing, okay? Potatoes, Dextra, and all that other shit. All that shit's gone. They're not tariffing that anymore. That tax went away. It's just on cargo vehicles now and it's for no reason. And you're like, oh, this fucking fat electrician guy is just misrepresenting the entire situation because he's angry that he can't own a Toyota truck that he wants. No, that's not it. In 2003, no. the Cato Institute researched the entire thing. This is 21 years ago, by the right. way. They did all the research and they came to the conclusion, and I quote, the chicken tax is a policy that is in search of a rationale. There's so I want to just like, because this is in such short supply, and I'm sure that the fat electrician and many others will agree with me on this, that really there is a problem with certain influencers certain personalities that they just want to push a narrative whether they're educated or not so for example if you have something like in the vtuber sphere right something that's kind of an active thing right now if you will just a base overview i'll give it for everybody is the concept of a certain company and a certain uh, a certain talent and legal issues that are going on between the two. And there's a lot of speculation. And really, I don't really say a whole heck of a lot about it. And I use a lot of allegedly's and stuff like that when I do kind of, you know, converse about it because we don't have the whole situation. That being said, when a lawyer says, hey, I'm a lawyer. This is my assessment of the situation. This is this is what I this these this is what I think of this that has more weight. So for what I, and what I'm trying to get across by this is when a university really at something that is an accredited institution for all intents and purposes, is it not, says something that holds more weight than, bah, well, I'm on Twitter 24-7, the whole thing, right? No, you're not your average Twitter, your average TikTok user. This is a institution with prestige accreditation, uh, or at the very least at face value prestige accreditation. They have more weight saying something than not, right? For example, once again, if, say, I were to say something on the AK platform versus Brandon Herrera saying something on the AK platform, kind of his shtick, right? Who's going to have more weight in this? It's almost like one of them, one of us, is a specialist in these. It's not me. <laughs> It's, it's not me. And so if you know Brandon Herrera says something about the AK platform, I cool. Yeah, makes sense. And it's not, you know, he's got paperwork stuff to back it up. It, it's understanding who is talking out their rear end and who is not talking out their rear end. That is becoming increasingly a problem. So when stuff like this pops up, I try to, you know, look at it and try to just stress that things like this can be said and things like this should allow be allowed to be said by individuals and organizations with the you know the correct sphere the, the correct influence in that sphere right if a scientist specializing in arachnology says something about spiders okay cool i'm gonna take that as hey that they know what they're talking about if i pop on tiktok and somebody's talking about soap and spiders okay maybe i'm just gonna write them off as just talking out their arse so thing that just really just grinds my gears about modernity is that everyone's a specialist everyone goes to youtube university but when actual specialist organizations individuals with prestige do talk about something they're often ignored no fucking reason for this law to exist other than to fuck people over i have literally spent the last three days of my life successfully wrapping my entire brain around this issue and come to the conclusion it's so fucking stupid that it's driving me insane this is literally the epitome of government intervention what's the problem oh germany's not eating enough american chicken don't worry the government's gonna step in and help fast forward 70 years guess what germany's still not eating enough american 
chicken, but you're not allowed to own a Toyota Hilux either. Oh, good. I'm literally getting cock blocked from owning my dream car. Thank you. I'll be honest. I don't even understand how I got here. Like I just, I woke up one morning. There yeah. was like, oh, hey, Toyota's coming out with a new truck that's going to be super cheap and cool. And I'm like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to be allowed to buy it. And nah. next thing I know, I'm fucking the internet's crazy uncle on Thanksgiving somehow. I just... <laughs> I need a beer. Yeah, okay, I got, this is, I need this is too, too much. I gotta go. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over at thefatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. The unsubscribe podcast. I Everyone on there is great. To Toyota Hilux at this point. It's gonna happen. This was amazing. I absolutely love this. This is nothing short of epic. So first off, I want to say thank you to the fat electrician for putting out another amazing video on the fat files channel if you have which leads me on my second point if you haven't checked out the fat files channel which is the fat electrician second channel if you're new to the fat electrician if you didn't know that the fat electrician has a second channel the fat files definitely go check it out it will be linked in the description down below um third this is an amazing video i loved it from the really cool ad read the really funny ad read to learning about you know chicken tariffs learning about you know uh, questions of the background such as you know hey why are why don't we have any of these smaller vehicle and smaller trucks you know what would happen to these you know a lot of questions got answered today and uh I, I feel like i myself am needing a drink after this because god i don't know I, I, reality is truly stranger than fiction like i i am i i'm upset that i lack the creativity to write a story in which this is a fact, this is a, a facet of it. This is an aspect of the story where you have a tariff in search of rationale by an institution who researched this 20 years ago, right? 21 years ago specifically. It just, I don't know. It's so weird, but uh, I don't know. I'm not, I don't like del delving into politics. Stuff like this is fine, right? Where it's face level. It's when we start diving into the deeper and I do do firearm content on this channel. I do do a lot of uh, firearm reactions and uh, that runs into its own issues with certain copyright organizations and certain uh, YouTube terms of service and guidelines. So uh, also the F-bomb as well. That's incredibly mixed. We have a lot of large creators who drop a lot of F-bombs and they're seemingly unaffected. So just in case, uh, if you haven't, definitely go check out The Fat Electrician, especially if stuff gets hit by manual review for strong language or profanity. Definitely just go check him out. Support him in the algorithm. The algorithm definitely needs to push his stuff more. And I digress. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the Hilux? Did you uh, learn something from this? Did you perhaps get an answer to a question you had seen either on social media or something that you had, uh, you know, seen before? You know, I guess, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> Do you think that this was just an absolute trip down a rabbit hole you didn't need to go down? No, no, you need to go down. Thank you everyone for coming out. Definitely do appreciate it. I will see you all in the next one.